All right, so the new death drop just dropped. And then some information about set eight has come out already. A lot of information. And a lot of units, traits, augment changes. And we're going to start right away. Go into it. First of all, we have villainous units. They're going to be like dragons. But we're taking away the two slot type of units. And they're going to be traitless. Meaning that... You can just splash them in anywhere. It doesn't matter uh, what what comp you're playing. You can just play them. Currently, we have in the current information we have Ramus. Surprise, surprise. We have Zach, Belkos, and Belbeth. And we'll be looking into those units just a little bit. Megs and Star Guardians are returning. Not much information I could take out from the from the death drop, but Star Guardians. We know that. It ramps up like Ginsu's. You get mana, just like previous set. But, you know, it, you get mana faster as the, as the fight goes on. So, good late game. A lot of low mana cost units. There's Kai'Sa, Syndra. A lot of uh, those units that have the Star Guardian skins. So, Achmans. He They did mention that Achmans will be staying forever. Because they are fun. and I love them. They bring a lot of variety to the game. There's nothing wrong with them. Albeit, just, you know, give it was more variety, more build variety, you know, if, if, if augments weren't in the game, we would just build the same thing every time, and we wouldn't have that much more meta variety, which is very nice. Heroes and villains would be the theme of the, of the set, of set 8. Uh, you, we will get augments, so a lot of units, if not all, will have at least two augments related to them that will make them the hero of the match. They will have either ways to carry or ways to support your your whole team board. So that's going to be fun. So technically, all of the units will, will be viable. Not in high play, but casually, they will have potential, which is good. And at the same time, really hard to balance. But we'll see. I think at the end of the day, when you're playing ranked and you're like in high masters, there's always going to be like this comp that's always going to work out. Another thing I noticed is that HP will still be a good theme. A lot of these hero augments that I've noticed give you health. Uh, hero augments for Alistar and Zac, they give them HP or they base some scaling on HP. So that's still going to be a subject because they did nerf Giant Slayer really hard when Dragons came out because... Dragons naturally have more health than usual, so Giant Slayer would naturally be a counter to them. And since we had so many, they changed it. And it will go on change, as of for now, in this current set. Although, we don't know how many, how much HP they're going to have, other than the, the scaling, because there's not that much... Uh, they're one cost. They're, they, they only take one slot instead of two. We also saw that all the, the villainous units are red. Their car art is red, but they do have various costs. We know now that Vel, Velkos is three costs. Uh, Zack is a four cost. And Belveth, I believe, is a four cost. We have more information about what these units do later on. We'll talk about all the units that we have information on after the gameplay and general overview. The smaller heroes, for example, when you pick an augment, they will be villainous augments, which will have a different presentation from the usual rocky uh, augment presentation. They'll be like dark, reddish. However, smaller heroes, like I said, have, will have a different way to carry. Either if they're support, they will give team white auras. If they're you know DPS, they will have a more specific way for them to carry. And if they're tanks, there's also ways to carry. For example, Annie has a augment that when she gets hit, enemies take 100 damage each time they hit. Is there a cooldown? It didn't tell, but 100, 100 damage every auto, that could be pretty insane. But that also confirms that Annie is a two cost that will be a tank. All of these things are always subject to change. Usually the cost doesn't change that much because of globalization and language change, I believe it is. There's a better name for it. Anyways, they might be new artifacts. There is a... Ezreal has a... 
augment that allows him to give a artifact to his to his uh, friendly units. Artifacts could be the own items, or it could be a whole new set of items. Usually, in every set, there are new set of items that come into come into play. So I wouldn't be surprised if there's more, but it's possible also that it could be the own items. Ramus, Ramus is finally added. Or Ramus is in the set. Who? Who allowed? I never said Ramus could be in freaking. I knew they were gonna add him because we were ramping up too much hype for him not being in the game, so it was a surprise for him to be added. So that was a cool little moment where they did, but they did add Ramus. He is a villainous unit. We I did not see the card art and see you know whether he's a four cost five cost. His ult is his ult in in League of Legends where he jumps and and smashes the ground in an AOE. I didn't see it stun. So it's hard to say if it's actually a five cost, but it's definitely between a four cost and a five cost. And being you know seeing the hype, it might be a five cost. It's possible. It's funny how it evolved from being a meme into being added. So people do have power. Just go to Mort, annoy him with something, and the more you annoy him, the more hype it changes. It, it charges. It's usually a good thing. Uh, Zach, Zach, it, this is either a trait. Or it's a natural thing that Sag does. Because I see him multiple times that he separates into different units. At one point he separated after he died. And other points he separated while he was still alive. So that could be augment or it could be natural. Or it could be natural and with augment it's stronger. We will have to see that. But it's a cool mechanic. He He's like a Hydra. He, mul he multiplies. And his ult, it's uh, his ultimate in League of Legends where he just splashes up and down and does a AOE damage. Star Guardians also have a little mechanic which is hard to see, can't say if it's an augment or not, but when they auto, they mark an enemy just like the swift shot mechanic that does true damage. I forgot the name of it, but after a certain amount of hits it's taken, I think, I believe five, it procs. Now I don't know what this proc does, it could give mana, it could allow you to cast right away it's possible because of the low mana that uh, usual uh, star guardians have right now i confirm that kaisa being a star guardian has 30 mana and 50 mana lux has 50 mana so it's well they're impossible these are all theory craftings that uh were i was able to determine a new econ trait the new econ traits always exciting like pirates this one's called underground underground what it does it has a very similar mechanic to pirates. I can almost bet that it's gonna be a one cost, two cost, and three cost underground because we, you don't want to, you know, have three, three one cost undergrounds and be really for it to be easier to or let's call it accessible. It's better to be accessible. For example, Astros is very accessible. Uh, Shimmer Skill is not accessible. Pirates weren't accessible. They had. One, two, three costs in order for you not to be able to find the three costs as fast and, you know, force it every game. What Underground does is that for every win, you get one stack. This stack allows you to pick up the reward right away or you can choose not to pick it up and for it to accumulate to be a higher, higher reward. In the first uh, reward, we saw that it could be gold and a... And a in a component. This could be a two loss. Oh, sorry. I should say that when you lose, you get two progressions. When you win, you get one. And you can stack this up. You don't have to constantly have, be in a lose streak. You could just lose, win, win, you lose, win, lose, win, lose, win. And But as long as you keep, decide not to pick your rewards, they will continuously stack up. And uh, they also showed a reward possibility of four radiant items and a artifact item so that's exciting we'll see how that goes but that's definitely going to be the fun econ trade we have the awkward trade with Oc force for what we saw and what they say is that they have immunity they keep fighting to the very end that's the the quote and you could see that when they fight and they reach zero health they continue to fight just for a little bit they didn't show their death animation so it could be that it gives you a bit of extra time. It gives them stats at that moment. We'll see. Blitzcrank's back. And surprisingly, 
it's a wand cost. And it'd be weird for a wand cost to have that pull mechanic. In previous set, we had Thresh as a two cost, and Blitzcarry was always a two cost. So after digging a little bit into it and seeing the footage, Blitzcarry will not be pulling. It seems like what he does is just he cranks up a shield. That's what he does. I could be wrong. We, we also have the new admin trait. The admin traits would allow you to choose uh, in between three different options the cost that will make the effect. After you choose the cost, whether it is when the combat starts, when a unit dies, every second, every X second. After you choose the cost, you can choose the effect, whether it's get gold, uh, get more AP, get more AD. There's seven options of each that we'll be able to play with. So that's fun. I'm pretty sure that's a way for Mordok not to get blamed for, oh, this trait sucks, this trait's OP, etc. And leave you the blame to yourself. But we'll still be blaming it on being more dogged. So that's still a thing. We also have Anima Squad. Anima Squad is another he heroic uh, trait, which when whenever they get a kill, they get a stack. So these, these units get to constantly stack certain stats. Uh, maybe each different one has uh, one stacks AD, one stacks AP, etc. Could be. But all we know right now is that per on kill, they stack. Uh, no, There's no armory anymore. Uh, the raptors are back. Instead of dragons, uh, the dragon armory or any other thing is just raptors. Let's go into units. For units, we have Lulu's a one cost. Don't know much uh, uh, about what it can do. There is Poppy, and Yordles might be back. I did see some uh, a Yordle augment. That's a bit of a far reach, but it's possible. Annie, like I said, it's a tank, bell cost. Fiora, being a one cost, stacking straight, attacking in a straight line. The immunity, most likely. Whether she's a one cost or two cost is left to be seen. Jinx is a straightforward projectile that does an AoE at the end. Kind of like her ult, but in a smaller scale. Echo shields himself. That's all I could I was able to see. Uh, Silas per, per, periodically does an AOE around him. Uh, Misfortune is the anima. She has the big AOE ult that she has in League. It's a very short duration, but it could do a lot of damage. So she's definitely going to be in that corner to hit as much as she can. Nasus. Nasus is a one cost, I assume, because his ability is very simple he just bonks you like the q in league of legends he bonks but he doesn't stack he stacks if you get the augment for him so you could uh carry naces there's gonna be most likely a lot of one cost carries because of the ability to stack uh not to stack to stack au uh, hero augments can you stack augment uh, you know two hero augments about the one same hero that is not confirmed we'll never we'll, we'll have to figure that out as more information comes out. But it's very interesting that it's going to lock you in into certain comps. Like if you pick this hero Aquaman, you're going to have to play this hero. You don't have to. Maybe you can try to make a switcheroo of sorts. But it sounds a little iffy or inefficient. We talked about Zack being a, a four cost. Bounces up and down. Multiplies. Uh, Cho'Gath. There was no show of Cho'Gath. But I'm... Certainly he's a 5 cost because at 4-2 you get the Cho'Gath hero augment and he was shown at 4-2 with a very specific animation, uh, not the animation, but the villainous uh, portrayal, let's call it that. And there was no information, but I do wish he is a tank, we know that, based on what the, what the uh, hero augment does. But... I do wish him to be stacking, eating at the same time. Although, since if he's a 5 cost, he's not going to stack that early. So, we'll see. Maybe he gets 200 health per stack. Wouldn't that be, be fun? I do miss that Cho'Gath. That uh, mutant Cho'Gath from last set. Alistar could be a 3-4 cost. Not much shown. All we know is that he knocks up your enemies in an AoE in front of him. How he has... Two heroic augments that were shown. One that he scales. He one shots one enemy, scaling his damage with HP or doing an AoE and getting health. 
Uh, Kaisa, like I said, 30 mana, shoots a straightforward projectile. She does dash from side to side from time to time. That could be very specific. That could be a hero augment because there were battles where she didn't dash and battles where she did. So could be a heroic augment, but she does shoot a projectile with 30 mana. So blue buff holder confirmed. There's always going to be a blue buff holder in, in every set. Lux, it's a... Uh, Lux has 50 mana. She throws her shield thing. But I believe it does damage because I, I did not see it giving shield. There's Star Guiding Rail, Star Guiding Echo. Rail does the same AoE from where she is. AoE on herself and on an ally. Unsure if it does damage or just gives defense or both just like she does now. Um, Belbeth. Belbeth, I saw, what she does is, I think she's a 4 cost, because her, her ability is very simple. Otherwise, maybe she has a, uh, 5 cost usually have a secondary thing, where it shows a trait on the on the left side. She, they have a special trait, and, but their ability, is very her ability specifically, is very simple. It's 20 to 30 mana, she, auto, she attacks, dashes, does a special attack, shreds armor, and... Keeps doing the same thing over and over. Could have a special thing. Could not. Who knows. But for now she's a villainous unit. And that's what she does. Uh, there's Vi. Vi hits the ground below her. Shreds damage. Basically the same one as the, uh, Vi Warlord. Actually a lot of Vi's just have that thing. Where they, they just hit in front of them. And shred shred armor. So she's a bruiser tank. Kel. Kel one cost it's very simple she just auto attacks ascends keeps auto attacking i didn't see anything special but for now that is all that i was able to uh, dig out from that i can't wait for the pve a lot of bucks to fix and a lot to feedback to give that's gonna be fun so stay tuned for that i'll be streaming that at twitch.tv slash oyok9 and yeah excited for that and i'll see you